Okay, everybody, so here we are in uh, bracing land. I'm going to take off our clamps, the brace we glued on yesterday. And um, take off these guiding blocks, which we no longer will need for this guitar. And now we'll take this guy off. That's a pretty big chip, huh? <laughs> so. Plug this back into the bench. Okay, so we need tape. And um, <coughs> maybe we'll put on two layers of tape. Just to be sure we have a little cushion next to the brace where we're going to be using cutting tools and sanding blocks to get this brace to the right strength. And again, uh, my feeling about the brace is that it's the bracing is there not so much to hold up the mine shaft as it is to help discipline the behavior of the top. And help the top behave in a, a coherent way. So we can get low end tone that we love. Uh, and we don't have you know, funny sounding notes <clears throat> that indicate that the instrument is maybe competing with itself in a way that we don't, we don't like. So, one thing we'll do is just make a, a quick mark on the tape of where it's crossing so we have an idea. I like to put the apex of the bridge height here and <clears throat> We'll just see what we're starting with, roughly. Uh, 280, or just a little over 7 millimeters, which is about right, a little high. And then um, I'm using this spoon plane, which I like very much for this job. And this is a modified plane that um, we'll get into how this works 
and how you make your own at some point. But this was a commercial plane that I bought. Um, but the throat opening was just disastrously gigantic. And so I brazed on another piece of material and extended the slot through that new bottom um, to create a really nice, really nice tool. And the thing that works really well about this is that the, um, the handle allows you a lot of control and comfort so that you can relax. A little tape residue here from our... our double sided tape. That'll be gone soon and it will no longer plague us. Okay. Spruce is such a lovely material to work with. It cuts so sweetly and with a sharp tool. The surface that's left by a sharp tool on spruce is just, it's just wonderful. And it, it's something that you can't really get with sandpaper or any other action, any other cutting really. It, there's really nothing that equals the quality of a surface left by a very sharp iron. Well, we talked a little bit about how the uh, stiffness of a piece of material varies with the cube function of its thickness. And <clears throat> over the years, I've come to understand that especially in the top part of the upper bout of the guitar, the braces really can be diminished almost to nothing. Um, it just doesn't need much support um, physically because of the nice strong shape of the arch. And um, because the guitar gets small here, this area of the guitar is pretty far away from the bridge. And also, well, this is a cutaway guitar, so this piece is missing, and here's my sand hole over here. Um, there's not a lot of top left for the brace to control. When you look at side some arch tops, um, it looks like the Builders might have been anticipating some brutally high loads. Um, but of course, that's not what happens. The, the force on the top is not that great. It's a resulting vector from a set of strings which apply I don't know, depending on what you use, 150 or 200 pounds of force. So the down bearing force on the bridge is a small fraction of that. <clears throat> and it just doesn't, just doesn't make sense that you need a huge bunch of wood, wooden supports in there to resist this fairly small load that the strings apply. So I decided to use the gouge to get the tape goo off. Now, one thing I do know is that I want the braces to taper down to vanishing. Um, pretty much nothing at the ends. 
Um, this is important to me for the low end response of the guitar. I just can't imagine um, doing it any other way, although I haven't quite seen it done this way before. But it seems to me to be just exactly what you want. It, this part of the instrument around the perimeter is really, really important for the low end response of the guitar. When the, the top is in big pumping modes. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so I know I want this to be near zero here at the end. And now I'm going to make a pretty curve between my near zero and my apex. And this, um, not exactly cheating, but I've done this a lot now. And I, I'm pretty confident of what I, what I want to get. So I'm going to cut it pretty close to what I think I want before I start feeling it because I know, as we've mentioned, that small changes in the size of the brace make very, very substantial changes in the stiffness of the brace. I can't tell you <laughs> how wonderful this is. This is a great tool. This pretty little brace on this top that has consumed so many hours of my life. <laughs> and uh, a gratifying fun day. So, well, maybe now we'll have a a feel. Let's see what we got. the tops pretty thin uh, they're maybe uh, about 3.2 or something like that 3.2 millimeters around the edge and they're thinner in here uh, maybe 2.6 to 2.8 and then they gradually bloom in the center, which could go up to maybe, again, 3 point something, 3 point 4 or 5. Um, and that's, those are pretty much the, the kinds of thicknesses that I've come to depend on. to make guitars with a big voice and what I consider to be, uh, particularly for an archtop guitar, an unprecedented low end. Okay. So we're down to 6.8 millimeters here. And I'm going to thin this part of the brace a lot. Brace felt quite strong to me. So I'm going to take quite a bit of wood out of this, this part of it.
Okay. That's good. Okay, well, we're getting there. <clears throat> so, in case it's hard for you to see, here we have uh, 118 or 3 millimeters. Here's some um, 2 millimeters. Um, or 72, yeah, 72 thou there and in the middle we're uh, 223 thousandths which is 5.7 Well, I'm going to now um, shape the brace and then feel it again and see if I like it. So, in order to shape the brace, I'm going to reach for my old guy eyes. <laughs> and, more importantly, one of my favorite gouges. We're going to do a thing about this gouge. Um, and show you how how versatile it is. Um, it's kind of generically called a violin maker's gouge, but it's just great for so many things. And one of them is this. It's really easy to guide. It's so long, you have beautiful control. Um, over the uh, angle that you're cutting at. And of course, since the, it's just a plain edge, you can see exactly where the wood is being cut, it's just really great. So, it's turning around over here. which is something we would expect. It usually turns around somewhere. Um, in other words, <clears throat> I've gone to great trouble to get the brace wood exactly the way I want. in uh, fiber orientation and I do that on the bandsaw and you know with a hand plane try and get the uh, try and get the uh, 
green orientation perfectly vertical and then of course it's nice to get a nice straight green piece of wood so you don't have a bunch of wiggles and turnarounds to deal with when you're shaping it with hand tools like we are right now so you can you can hear maybe you can hear on the microphone when it <clears throat> starts complaining about being cut in the wrong direction hmm. <laughs> And since it's spruce, there's always some place where it just doesn't seem to be happy doing anything. <laughs> and you just have to try and make friends with it and figure out how to handle that. Usually, lighter cut <clears throat> and uh, sharper tool are the first things you do. Um, sometimes, sometimes you have to give up and go for sandpaper, but I'm trying to save that for last. Mostly because this is just so much fun. One nice way to hold this gouge <clears throat> is like this. So your control over it is just great. So you've got your, this joint in your hand is braced 
by the tool itself and um, just really gives you a good feel for where the edge is and how to get it to go where you want it to go. Oh, this is what I'm looking for. Still maybe a tiny bit stiff, but um, I think we're gonna get it <coughs> with uh, the little bit of material we're gonna remove with sandpaper. And of course we can always take more off, <laughs> but I'm, I'm liking this a lot. I want this to feel pliant. And I want it to bend evenly. And you can feel a lot about what's going on by flexing it like this. Maybe a little bit too stiff right here. So um, on this tool, I removed some material here and here, um, and that way the blade comes out and cuts all the way to this surface. And the reason for that is 
that I can use it also right here to help me finish up my little rounding over and you'll see how beautifully this works huh Hard for me to imagine <clears throat> how a tool could work better than this for this job. This thing really worked out great. And uh, as I said, I'm looking forward to showing you th those of you who are interested in how to make your own little magic wand. Here's where the two layers of tape are useful. Of course, taking a tiny cut and not pressing very hard, but it's nice to have the tape there as a cushion. talking. That's good. Okay. This is probably stronger than it needs to be. Gonna take some some more wood out of that side.
I think I'm good here. I think we got what we want. I'm going to do just a little bit of sanding. <coughs> and call that first whisker done. Really, it's more of a whisker than a brace, right? <laughs> <laughs> 